you need to have one action that you want your audience to take, mm-hmm. not two, not three, one. So I'll see speakers and they'll they'll come off stage and they'll say, oh, you know, uh, oh, and if you want to connect with me, just connect with me at Josh Ramsey on, on uh, mm-hmm. Instagram. I'm also on Facebook. You can go to facebook.com Josh Ramsey mm-hmm. or, you know, my Twitter feed is this. And what's happening, people don't like choices. Your brain is working too hard now. They don't like choices. This is a big misconception. People think yeah. you have to give people choices. No, you don't. You want to give them one call to action. Welcome to the Clear Brand Academy podcast, where we take the mystery out of marketing and help you get more leads and sales with a clear brand and proven marketing tactics. I'm your host, Josh Ramsey. And today we have Dr. Danny Brassel, who is a highly sought after speaker, trainer and coach known as the Jim Carrey with a PhD. He's spoken to over three and a half thousand audiences worldwide and authored 16 books, including his latest leadership begins with motivation. He helps entrepreneurs, executives and small business owners boost their business and impact by improving their communication skills. Welcome to the show, Danny. It's great to have you here. Thanks so much for having me, Josh. And thanks a lot for your podcast. I learned so much. It's actually really helped my business. So uh, your listeners are in for a treat whenever they're listening to you. Oh, well, thank you so much. It's a, it's a wonderful medium to to share. And I got to say, when I, when I read your bio and I saw your application come in, I did a little happy dance because believe it or not, I wanted to be, well, Ace Ventura, which was a character that Jim Carrey played. But I've, I've watched Jim Carrey's career and uh, I think his ability to communicate emotion and communicate narrative is, is second to none. So I'm a big fan. Why, before we get in, I know there's so much to get into. Why Jim Carrey with a PhD? You got a funny bone as big as your femur or what, what's going on? Well, before I was, uh, before I, I spent most of my, uh, uh, career as a teacher. Before I was a teacher, I was a journalist. And before that, uh, I was a stand-up comedian. And uh, I've always tried to infuse hey. humor into my presentations and into my teaching. Uh, and yeah. even when I was a teacher, I always say, you know, I take my job seriously. I don't take myself seriously because I ain't all that. And neither <laughs> are you. And if you think you're all that, teach kindergarten for one week. They'll, t- they'll Those little ones will, will set you straight. I once had a, uh, a little girl. I'm like, LaShonda, you have a question? And she's like, Miss Brissell, when are you going to trim your nose hair? And I'm like, uh, this afternoon. Thank you for bringing that to my attention. I'm yeah, thank you. Aware. That uh, Actually, I need a break right now. I'm going to go. Yeah, so um, I've, uh, I've been a teacher to young ones. Uh, my mom... And I come from a family of teachers, Montessori based, so generally oh, little ones. And yeah, the truth value there is uh, very, very leaned into, should we say that? <laughs> okay, great. Um, I also have a lot of respect for stand up comedians. I've got a, a background in acting, and I've performed three stand up shows live, hardest things to do. So, you know, hats off, uh, gritting your, you know, getting your teeth. Uh, uh, nicely worn there and starting off on what I can see is an amazing career. So as I said, we could take this conversation in a million different directions. I mean, 16 books, that is, uh, that's, that's quite something as someone that hasn't written one. Um, but again, we're going to be leaning into marketing business. And I think there's just such a wonderful opportunity. Uh, I've, you know, I've done a lot of research on, I've done some research on the work you've done and as a little bit of a self-help kind of addict, I've found one of the most powerful ways to improve my confidence, my um, presence, all of these things is actually in success through business. Mm-hmm. So I'm really hoping that we can lean into your skill set. And I want to start off just talking about story and wherever you want to go to give us a nice foundation around why you're so passionate about reading with a quote, and then we can kind of head down the rabbit hole into the world of marketing. And I love this. Uh, it's from one of your references. Uh, a man only learns by two things, Will Rogers said. One is reading, and the other is association with smarter people. Mm. So with that as a backdrop, why reading, and why are you so, I assume, happy that this is where you've ended up? <laughs> well, it's, it's kind of ironic that I became one of America's leading reading ambassadors because I grew up hating reading, Josh. Uh, my father was a librarian, and I always hated the public library. It always smelt funny. <laughs> 
The furniture was uncomfortable. There was yeah. always some elderly woman telling me to be quiet. And there was always some freaky homeless guy who thought he was a vampire hanging out by the bookshelves. I always hated the <laughs> library. And it wasn't until I actually started teaching in the inner city and I saw a lot of my students didn't have a lot of the things I had growing up. I mean, I grew up, you know, lower middle class, but we always had food on the table. Mm -hmm. Both of my parents mm -hmm. were at home. And my parents always read to us kids. They read in front of us. And we always had plenty of access to reading materials. And I said, shame on me, Josh. You know, uh, it became a passion of mine to, to start exposing people to all the wonderful things out there to read. And uh, one, I've been blessed to have lots of wonderful mentors. One of my mentors was a guy by the name of Charlie Tremendous Jones. And he said, you're the same today as you will be in five years, except for two things, the people you meet and the books you read. So I always encourage people, uh, surround yourself with people that lift you up and make sure uh, you fill your mind with lots of uh, really good books. Uh, I'm a big believer in you are what you read, so read good stuff. And you and I mm -hmm. both share a passion for uh, self-help, personal development, uh, business success. Uh, it's, it's the same reason I, I listen to podcasts. Uh, you know, I, I actually get excited whenever I'm driving because I have a mobile university there. I get to listen to your podcast yeah. and, and uh, audible books and, and things like that. I see so many people wasting their time on social media and, uh, oh, I was watching this horrible TV show the other day, Josh. It was called uh, The News, and uh, it yeah. totally depressed me. <laughs> Spoiler alert, it doesn't get better. I've been watching it a while, <laughs> it on off and on. It, there's, no, there's no conclusion. There's no nope. heroic. Uh, no, it kind of runs around in circles, the same villains. <laughs> yeah, the world is always coming to an end, and whoever your leader is, they're doing a bad yeah. job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And and the next leader is going to change everything. Oh yeah, oh, yeah absolutely. <laughs> okay, well before we before we uh we we take a, a misstep into some 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 political conversations, let's keep focused on a universal value of reading. Uh it's one thing that has been wonderful. I recently joined the team at clearbrand.com mm. having bought I I kind of bought from them as a customer first. So I'm I'm all in on what we do here at Clearbrand. And um, our founder is an avid reader, and he has recommended many books. So some of the ones that I've been digging into, if there's any common ground, we want to pick on specific things here, let's do that. Otherwise, mm -hmm. um, I, I've got a direction I want to go. Uh, Good to Great, Jim Collins, um, specifically in the marketing space, Byron Sharp, How Brands Grow, Part 1 and 2, uh, Building Distinctive Brand Assets as well. I mean... Do those have you read any of those? Have you heard oh, of those? Gosh. Have you got any thoughts on them? I, I, yeah. I love them. Uh, you know, a couple. I'm going to throw out some more for your readers out there. Uh, and if, mm -hmm. if they're not readers, again, folks, uh, if you're not a reader, you know, the research is very clear on this. It doesn't matter uh, what you read, it matters how much you read. And listening to books is just as powerful as reading them on your own. As a matter of fact, over half of the Fortune 500 CEOs across the world are dyslexic. And I've worked with a lot of dyslexic students and people don't realize wow. that dyslexia, when you have dyslexia, it's a reading disability and all reading disabilities are curable. And one of the best strategies with dyslexics is they process things a lot better through their ears. And so uh, I always encourage them to listen to uh, audible books. Uh, you know, I think a lot mm -hmm. of the, the best ones, uh, really for your audience, uh, if they haven't uh, read books by Robert Cialdini, his, his two books, Influence and Persuasion, you will learn more about ethical marketing and how to persuade audiences how to persuade mm -hmm. customers to do further business with you. I think Robert Cialdini is just incredible. Actually, he also has a book uh, with Noah Goldstein and Steve Martin called uh, uh, Yes, uh, 50 Ways mm -hmm. of uh, Ethical Persuasion. Just wonderful stuff. I love The Success Principles by Jack Canfield. Uh, after I read that book, I told my, my marketing coach at the time, I told him, I'm like, man, I just read uh, Canfield's book on a flight uh, to Tokyo. 
And I'm like, man, he's put a $25,000 coaching program into a $20 book. The stories are incredible. The strategies are amazing. I would have paid $20 just for the bibliography. And I, I, I told my mm-hmm. coach, I'm like, you know, I'm going to make it one of my missions this year to meet Jack Canfield. And he said, well, I'm actually having him at an event I'm having in, in April. I was scheduled to speak, Josh, in, in New York and I canceled the engagement just so I could meet Jack Canfield. I met him a couple of times now, and uh, you know it's it's tough when you meet people that uh, you 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 hope. Oh, I hope this person's great. And Jack was fantastic. Every time I met him, he's a very giving person. Um, I'm a huge fan of Brian Tracy. I'll just I'm just gonna say this really quickly about Brian Tracy. I had never met Brian Tracy. And uh, the book that I'm going to give all of your listeners, Read, Lead, and Succeed, I sent him a copy of that book and I asked him if he would possibly give me a testimonial. And this is an amazing story, Josh. Brian Tracy is one of the top business speakers on the planet. And he wrote me a testimonial without even knowing me within 72 hours. I have close uh-huh. friends that still haven't written me a testimonial. And I said, that's, yeah. that's why he's at the top of his field is yeah. he had the time uh, for it, somebody it, like me. So, uh, and I, I always just love to tell that story because I can tell you all the stories about the negative people. I'm not going to tell you those, but uh, Brian Tracy. Now really that's what the news it. is for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So um, that it, it reminds me of a great saying, you know, uh, if you want something done, give it to a busy man, uh, yeah, a busy, right. busy woman. And um, yeah, there's, there's so much in there that, uh, I, you know, at one point when you were just mentioning starting that list of great authors and uh, you listening out there, if you need to go back and listen to this on half pace and make some notes, do that. <laughs> because each one of those names that was dropped in there is, I think this is what asto- astounds me is that, you know, in the podcasting kind of game, we, I meet, you know, you were just a name on a form. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And now you've opened all of these doors and, and each one of these names is going to open so many doors for you. And so definitely go back, uh, you there listening right now and go and check out those books, make a note and, and start with one of them. I'm sure there's many others and I really enjoy the book that you've given to our listeners. Thank you for that. It's a, it's a real gift because right. in there are wonderful additional books that can be read on each chapter that, that, you've, that you've spoken about. Um, I at one point in while you were speaking there, I wanted to put my hand up for those that are on YouTube and you'd see my hand here and say, teacher, teacher Brassel, can you summarize the best book there in 30 seconds of what's in that book? And, and if you could only choose one. <laughs> oh, dear. Plus your nose hairs need trimming. <laughs> I know. It's difficult. It's difficult. Um, well, I, I guess, uh, again, I think anybody – who wants to expand their business, which I, I'm going to mm-hmm. guess is 100% of your audience. I, I, I really encourage you to read Influence by Robert Cialdini, uh, which basically he takes you through, I think he has six major principles. You know what? No, I'm going to give you another, another book just because I love to give different book recommendations. Uh, and I know the authors, uh, Chip and Dan Heath, Made to Stick. You can't miss this book. It's bright orange with duct tape on the cover. And they they basically <laughs> wrote a book based on a concept that is introduced by uh, Malcolm Gladwell in his wonderful book, Tipping Point, on how do you yeah. get ideas to stick in people's minds? And so they say a couple of things I love. Uh, have you ever heard that you can see the Great Wall of China from outer space, Josh? I've heard that. Okay, yeah. It's completely untrue. The Great Wall is long. Yeah, I, I, I... <laughs> But it's not wide. I mean, if that were the case, you could see any any single highway you could see from outer space. And yet, for some reason, that sticks in your brain. Have you ever heard that you only use 10% of your brain? I did hear that. Yeah. I did hear that. That's also completely untrue, Josh. I mean, if that's the case, if you get a car accident (laughs) and have brain damage, yeah, as long as it's the the 90% that you're not using, it's no big deal. But for some reason, that information stuck in your head. And this is a great concept because... All of us, every single one of your listeners is just naturally really good at something. You know, maybe you know every Mm -hmm. rugby statistic or maybe, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, everything there is to know about marketing. I mean, uh, for me, I have this ability when people tell jokes and stories, they stick and I just keep them in my head, Mm -hmm. file them away and I'll be able to use them. But I think everybody has something like that. 
And the whole point of this book is how do you get people to remember information? It was it was valuable to me as a teacher because I realized, wow, sometimes my students remember a lesson because I wore a silly hat when I taught it, or we did it outside, yeah. or uh, I gave a funny voice when I was doing the lesson. Um, what mm-hmm. is it that you're doing every? And you'll watch this. You'll you'll see it in politicians. You'll see it in comedians and and entertainers. What are they doing? You know. So if you look at take it Jim Carrey for example. His shtick was physical comedy, and uh, I was watching him at a roast for uh, Steven Spielberg. And oh my gosh, Josh, if you can pull this up on YouTube, it's just wonderful. Where he says uh, he looks at Spielberg. He's like, well, they when they asked me to. To give a tribute to Steven Spielberg, I, th- I, I said no. Why should I? He's never put me in one of his films. He's like, uh, you know, uh, I tried out for Jurassic Park as a Velociraptor. You know, <laughs> he starts acting <laughs> like a Velociraptor. Yeah, like, and, yeah. <laughs> he's like, he's like, I tried out for ET, and he starts doing his ET impersonation. <laughs> and he's like, you know what, Steven? People know that was a puppet. You know. <laughs> His his <laughs> you know, unfortunately we're lis- you know a lot of your listeners are on podcast so they can't see but his phys- physical physical yeah. shtick is just so amazing so that's his thing absolutely uh, yeah. everybody has a yeah. thing though uh, and you see it with yeah. certain comedians will do things uh, you'll see with leaders uh, like the Dalai Lama I mean when whenever you watch the, I, he's one of my favorite speakers he's an incredible speaker and. My favorite thing that he does in his shtick is whenever he starts a presentation, he smiles at the audience and he asks them, have you been kind today? And I love that. I'm like, wow. He's got all of us immediately in a mindset, oh, how can we be a little bit nicer to one another? And I'm like, wow, I think the world needs a lot more of that. So I'm always looking for what are people's shticks? Uh, and this is a great thing for business is how do you stand out in your business? You know, if, and this is why I'll watch like TV commercials, you know, you see like, uh, the car salesman, I'm crazy, Eddie, and I'm going insane. I'm getting rid of all these cars. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So it's like, okay, what's your shtick? How, how do you, how do you get people to yeah. remember you? Yeah, I was, uh, I was recently looking at Mattress Mac. Yeah, <laughs> you, I'm, I'm sure you've heard it. Uh, uh-huh. You know, I was just looking at that story and 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 all the ways in which he's he's just killed it with, uh, you know, a consistent showing up. I mean, and I think I think this is the big piece as well. Uh, and I'm, you know, that that talent, that natural talent, that gift is there, but nothing beats hard work. You know, nothing beats the consistent showing up. And Jim Carrey, you know, he he was from a very young age practicing that physicality his mom was sick his dad had a, had aspirations to be a comedian and, and didn't make it or decided not to pursue his dream and so there was a lot of you know compost and turning of the soil that then resulted in this mm. in this flower given the image that we're building here so that's that's awesome and i really appreciate you you bringing that in um you know, from the moment we got on this call, uh, I just knew that this was going to be a humdinger. So, so tell us a little bit more about, um, we've been speaking about reading, you've given us some amazing references, you've given us an amazing book. If you've just uh, joined us, I'm speaking with Dr. Danny Brassel. And he is a fantastic resource of knowledge. And I think the simple expertise that you have of, you know, look to the books, I'm here to point you in some directions. That's, that's amazing. And um, having spoken a lot about reading, uh, what I'm curious about is, you know, in the marketing side of things, there is something about speaking. Your marketing mm-hmm. speaks for you, um, and and I've heard you recommend that speaking is important or messaging. Can we can we start pivoting in that kind of direction with this conversation? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, this is really one of my passions. Actually, this was a blessing from the pandemic, uh, Josh, because. I always refuse to coach people because I'm, I'm a coach the same way as I'm a, as a teacher is I have a very high expectation and it always annoys me if people don't actually do the work. <laughs> I always tell people I'm like, you oh, will yeah. succeed if you do the work. And so it's great yeah. right now. Uh, one of my clients is a three time Olympic gold medalist in softball and she's wonderful because everything I ask her to do, I'm like, well, we yeah. can structure your presentation. She's it. been giving presentations for 20 years. And when we first met, I'm like, you don't need, me and she's like, no, I need you, Danny, because you're going to help me structure this and give me a, a, a formula. And that's really what I do with yeah. uh, 
primarily uh, business owners and entrepreneurs is I'm a big believer mm -hmm. in the best way to build up your business is through speaking. And so what I do is I help people create signature talks or signature presentations, whatever you want to call it. You can call it peanut butter and jelly. Yeah. And there's basically a formula and you can use this formula, whether you're doing a 30 second elevator pitch or a 45 minute keynote to an audience of your peers. Uh, there's a way yeah. to uh, ethically persuade people to do business with you. And that's how I I judge success. I only have one measure of success. I don't I mean, I always tell people I'm like, well, you know, a lot of people measure success by a standing ovation, and you'll probably get a standing ovation using this uh, strategy. And a lot of people measure it from people coming up to you afterwards saying, "Oh, uh, that's great! Uh, you're such a great speaker. changed my life." But yeah, yeah, yeah. You're probably yeah. going to have people do that, but my one measure is: Are people doing further business with you after your presentation? Because what we want to do Thank is you. To grow your business. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, um, we keep talking about marketing that gets results leads and sales that's what marketing has to do if it's not getting sales it's not marketing um and and the other piece there you've mentioned it twice ethical so i really appreciate that you've got that mindset in a world of so much you know misuse of yeah. of data misuse of information could you could you unpack some of those steps that the that the the speaker would go through and how they broadly structure it without uh, Without giving too much away or is giving him away well, I'll give as it much as, much as, as like? I, I believe in giving away all my best stuff. I'll give it all away because I, I, you know, and, I, and awesome. this is something when we're talking about ethics, I always tell the people I'm working with, you have a responsibility when you go on stage, whether or not people consider doing further business with you, you should be giving them something, a tool that they can actually use. I see so many people and all they're doing yeah. is they're just selling, selling, you know, and it's fine. I... I'm addicted to watching speakers, Josh. I was watching, I, when I lived in Los Angeles, I used to go to infomercials all the time because I was fascinated with the sales techniques. And there was this one guy, yeah. he was such a, su such a scuzzbag. He uh, had his slick back hair and his yeah. beautiful suit. And he says, there are two types of people in this world, good, hardworking people and rich people. And I'm like, Ugh, I need to take a shower after uh, listening to this guy. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, um, uh, the way we structure uh, a presentation, I, I've been blessed with lots of wonderful mentors. One of my uh, incredible mentors was a guy by the name of Pat Quinn, who I still have the pleasure of working with. I, he doesn't call it this. I call it his quintessentials to speaking success. Uh, and so basically, the most important parts of your presentation – are your opening and your closing. There's lots of research on this, and I believe in using the research to actually uh, affect my business in a positive way. And so it's called the primacy and recency effect. And what I want listeners mm -hmm. to remember is, oh my gosh, the bun is more important than the burger. People remember the beginning and the end. They don't remember the middle. So I see so many people that are worried about their content. I'm like, yeah, but the way you're going to... Uh, uh, make an impact is how you connect with your audience. And so your opening, you basically have to do th uh, three things in the first five minutes of your presentation. You have to show people that you're ordinary. You have to show people that you're extraordinary. And you have to show people your why. What's your why for existence? Now, I'm going to start with the extraordinary. I don't think, I, I actually get in debates with people on this. I don't think you have to do a whole lot on proving to your audience that you're extraordinary. The fact that you're on a stage already shows them that you're extraordinary, but I'm mm -hmm. gonna give it a tip for everybody right now. Listening, here's a ninja tip. Uh, I don't believe in bragging about myself, but I have no problem about writing an introduction that the person who is, you, you gave me a wonderful introduction. I'm like, okay, good. Josh just made me sound great. Uh, but that was Josh giving me a testimonial and an endorsement. Mm -hmm. And so here's actually one of my ninja tricks is if I know somebody famous is going to introduce me is I'm going to make that introduction written in a way so it sounds like a testimonial. So let, let's say I have Michael Jordan, the basketball player, is introducing me. He's like, my introduction is going to say, I've worked with lots of incredible people throughout my career, but nobody has been more influential than Danny Brussel at helping me grow my business. Now I can say, hey, mm -hmm. I have it on videotape. Michael Jordan said that about me. That's a video testimony. <laughs> so that's a little yeah. ninja trick. Yeah. Have them great. But I, here's the big tip, though. You know, when people are asking, well, what's the best way to, to connect with your audience? 
Don't tell people about your successes. Tell them about your failures. Because not everybody in your mm -hmm. audience has succeeded, but everybody has failed. And the more you confess to your own uh, failures, uh, you're exposing your own vulnerability. Brene Brown talks a lot yeah. about this in her presentation. Yeah. Your audience is going to love you because all of them have been in, the, in those shoes. So, so focus a lot more on that. Um, and then you have to talk about your why. This is the story of your business. Why did you go into business? Uh, you know, whether you're you're selling panty liners, uh, you know, uh, you look at Sarah Blakely. She she created a great why story on why she did that. Um, this is very important. The most important part of your presentation is the first five minutes connecting with that audience, because if you don't connect, they're not going to listen to the rest. So, you know, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. You, need to, you need to stuff your best your best stuff at the beginning. And then the other tip I give, Josh I was just judging a speaking competition. We had 1,300 speakers. And this is the problem I see a lot of speaking coaches uh, teaching their people show that vulnerable moment, you know. And so I watched 1,300 presentations where people told about their darkest moment. I, I'm not going to put that down. I, I think that's one way of doing a presentation. But I think you should look at a presentation the way you look at a first date. You know, on your first date, when you meet somebody, mm -hmm. you say, hi, it's nice to meet you. You know, uh, I, I've had five uh, drunk driving arrests and I killed a child. Uh, you know, <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> a bit, about? Uh, bit what, heavy. I don't know. Yeah, what do I, what do I put that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I prefer to start off with something like, and so I, I was giving a, uh, I was working with a, a businessman the other day and because he was trying to talk about when he declared bankruptcy. And I'm, I'm like, that's an important story. We can we can seed that throughout your talk. That's fine. But I'd rather you start off because I think people need hope. And so I have a presentation now where I say, you know, uh, every other teacher at my elementary school went through thousands of Band-Aids every single school year. I mean, kids want Band-Aids, Band-Aids and oh, stickers. Yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. they work better than smokes yeah. on a prison yard, you know, but every single <laughs> year I went through exactly one Band-Aid in my classroom. On the first day of school, I always have a chubby kid, Paco. He's picking at a scab all morning long. And usually he finally succeeds at opening it up after lunch. And the annoying girl next to him raises her hand. She's like, Mr. Vassell, Paco's bleeding. I'm like, oh my gosh, Paco, look at that wound. You know what you need? You need a Band-Aid. And I've literally got thousands of Band-Aids in my desk. And I... I, I, I want to give a secret to all of you. I don't just have any Band-Aids. I have Mighty Morphin Power Ranger Band-Aids. And Paco, I'm going to give you the Green Ranger because the Green Ranger is the coolest one of all. Now, all my kids' eyes are wide and they're, they're salivating. Oh. I take Paco to my desk <laughs> and I say, oh, before I put on the Band-Aid, Paco, we got to clean out the wound. And so I show all the kids the, the bottle of clear liquid of uh, rubbing alcohol. And I say, you might want to oh, hold goodness. my hand for this, Paco. This might sting. And I pour the rubbing alcohol. He starts screaming, ah! I put on the Band-Aid. I'm like, all right, kids, <laughs> who needs a Band-Aid? Josh? No, no. My students yeah, <laughs> have a skull fracture, and they will never ask me for a Band-Aid again. And so here's how I start the presentation. Folks, I'm not going to give you a Band-Aid today. I'm going to give you practical strategies that will actually show you how to structure your signature talk in a way that helps people want yeah. to do for their business with you. So within yeah. two minutes, that story took me two minutes, Josh. But I basically, yeah. I, I, I've gotten everybody laughing, but they also realize, oh, this guy might actually be able to help me. And I think it's, yeah. I, I think it's important to connect in a, I mean, gosh, man. Josh, the world has enough misery. You know, I'm so sick of hearing these depressing yeah. stories. You know, like, give me some hope, man. Get, make, make me smile. There's yeah. a lot to be said about getting people to smile. So that that's, I, I know I, I just. I think, I think the, yeah, I was, I was just going to say, you know, that um, it's important to smile. And I also think it's important to have the courage to tell the truth, you know, yeah. because that's where I think, I think you know, your Band-Aid story goes to as well. It's, um, guys, I'm, I'm not going to just tell you what you want to hear. And I mm -hmm. think that's something that we've 
run into with this podcast where it's like, where's the evidence? Where is the data yeah. that backs up this perspective that you have? Can you produce it? Do you have a case study? And sometimes, you know, people are like, well, I've never been challenged on that. And, and I, I kind of at the outset, that's, that's what this is. And I think that's, a, that's a wonderful story as well, because as you land, I knew that as I was listening to the story that I was in your process and I was uh-huh. loving it. You know, I'm, I'm, I can see Paco, I can see the girl, you, you know, you're using that, that wonderful, um, ability you have to to connect and then there is this truth and all of a sudden we're listening so let's let's lean into that instead of instead of band-aiding um i want to zoom out a little bit and understand why speaking Uh, i'm i'm a you know let's say i'm a businessman that that runs very much behind the scenes i'm a introvert analytical systems brain and um i don't want to speak you know are you does this apply to everyone certain categories certain industries why is speaking why is speaking important why is fi- why is finding stages to be on and be seen important how does that tie in yeah so the answer the quick answer to that is yes uh, Josh everybody can speak and I I love working you know uh, I was speaking in India and I had this six-year-old boy that came up to me he was missing his left arm and he had tears in his eyes and he said well Dr. Purcell how does somebody like me succeed and I got down to his level and I said you know, when I was your age, I went to 18 different schools before sixth grade. All the teachers and all the kids used to call me stupid b- 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 because I stuttered. And finally, I, I, I went to a school where a teacher, she would sing things to me. And I found I could sing them back without my stutter. And gradually, I lost my stutter and I became a swan. You know, it's sort of like the movie The King's Speech that actually happened to me. But I I looked at the little boy and I said, isn't this interesting? The little boy that everybody said was stupid and didn't talk right now gets paid vast sums of money going around the world, getting paid to do what? To speak. And he had the mm-hmm. biggest grin on his mm-hmm. face. And I said, don't let anybody tell you what you can't do. You know, the only things you can't do are the yeah. things that you're telling yourself you can't do. Speaking is the fastest way to grow your business because like, unlike any other type of marketing, you don't have to spend a dime. As a matter of fact, people will pay you to speak. And what I, I, I tell people, there's two things you have to do to become a better speaker. First of all, you got to watch lots of speakers. I mean, I watch... 10 speakers a day. I'm watching televangelists. I'm watching politicians. I'm watching comedians. I'm watching them in front of big audiences, in front of small audiences, in front of men, in front of women, internationally Mm -hmm. uh, and nationally. Um, Here's a quick tip for everybody. I watch a lot of award shows. Why? Because when that person wins the Academy Award, they only have 45 seconds to speak. Can they give a mm-hmm. coherent speech in 45 seconds. And it's interesting. I was watching them last year and most people, they're like, ah, 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 thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you. Academy. And they, they're just, mm-hmm. they're just sniveling idiots. But there was one guy and I, I, I apologize. I can't remember his name. He won like a technical award. So nobody knew who he was. Most people weren't paying attention to him. He was British and he gets up there and he wins the Academy Award. He says, a lot of people don't know this. But when phrased properly, the term Academy Award nominee can be used as an insult. For example, yesterday I got in an argument with my 17-year-old daughter and she said, well, Academy Award nominee, whatever his name was. And everybody in the audience was laughing, Josh. And I see this guy leave the stage and all of a sudden Julia Roberts wants to meet him. Brad Pitt wants to meet him. That's the power of a good Mm -hmm. speaker. And you can do this. I, yeah. I, I've i seen people do it all the time. And even people that aren't very good speakers, they can be trained. You watch Steve Jobs. He was not comfortable at first, but he practiced. He practiced all the... I, I always tell people, Robin Williams, one of my favorite comedians of all time. And mm-hmm. people are like, wow, he's so spontaneous. I'm like, no, he's not spontaneous. He's practiced that. The art yeah. is that he makes it look spontaneous. And that's what good speakers do. Uh, I I was giving a presentation last week and a woman said, oh, I could never do what you do. Uh, You were so quick at the question and answer session. And I looked at her and I said, what you don't understand is that question you asked me. 500 people have asked me that question before. And so before you asked that Mm -hmm. question, I had 500 opportunities to craft the perfect response to make you think that I was brilliant. 
Um, so the first part of becoming a good speaker is you got to watch lots of good speakers. The second part is you got to do the reps. You know, Jim Rohn used to say you can't pay other people to do your push-ups. You gotta you gotta go out there and speak. And so this is why uh, everybody I'm working with, I say you need to go for low stakes. And so I encourage people go on podcast. Uh, give presentations mm-hmm. to schools, to churches, synagogues, temples, uh, go to your chamber of commerce, mm-hmm. uh, go to service organizations, Rotary Club, Optimus Club. I mean, heck, I do a yeah. lot of speeches at Rotary Clubs. I mean, every single week they have a, a, a rubber chicken lunch at the Holiday Inn uh, for about 20 people. The rubber so there's only 20 lunch. people. <laughs> if you bomb, there's only 20 people you're bombing in front of. And, and every now and then yeah. you might not bomb. And you never know who's in that audience, Josh. I mean, I once gave a speech yeah. at a public library and they said, oh, there's going to be 500 people. Well, Josh, four people showed up. Two were my realtors and the other two was a Hispanic couple that didn't speak a word of English. But I believe in giving 110%. So I did as much in Spanish as I could. We had a lot of fun. Here's the teaching point, Josh. The Hispanic woman was taking English classes at the Adult Learning Center. She recommended me to speak. I had been making, this is when I first started speaking, I was making about $700 US a day uh, to speak. She recommended me for a 45 minute keynote where I got paid $4,000 US uh, for a four, and wow. I was like, wow, it doesn't matter how many people are yeah. in that audience. And this is a very key point I want your listeners to get to. It doesn't matter how many are in that audience. All that matters is who. If you only speak to one person, but it's Warren Buffett, that is not a bad time. Not, not not bad time spent in front of uh, somebody like yeah. that. And so those are the, those are the two tips. Watch lots of speakers, and then you got to go out there and do the work. Yeah, I think I think it's uh, there's a lot in there. And uh, what I took away from that is you know this idea of speaking. Uh, I think if we if we zone out, zone out and you know at Claire Brand we're always looking at systems thinking. If we if we get if we lose the detail, what is speaking? Speaking is you know getting your thoughts concise, getting your message clear and getting it out there. Sounds like marketing to me. It's about meeting people, building connections. It's about looking for some way to to add value together. Sounds like marketing to me. So whether that's for you listening right now that you need to go get on a stage at your local Rotary Club or it's you need to get onto LinkedIn and actually share some thoughts about what it is you've mastered or what it is you've overcome or maybe a little bit of the struggle and some of the hope and you know mission that you got out of it. I think I think it's a great reminder from you, uh, from you, Danny. Um, okay, so let's say I've got really interested in speaking. I'm now finding a virtual, physical, uh, rubber chicken or not rubber chicken opportunity to get on a stage. Um, somebody comes up to me afterwards and they're interested. They've connected with me. How do I move this into a sale? How do I move this into money in the bank so that I can? rest well in my great, you know, comfortable bed and come back and do more tomorrow. Um, is there a, is there a close the loop on this? What, what are your thoughts there? Well, that's, that's actually a good question. Nobody's ever asked me that, Josh. I like that. I appreciate that question. You know, so here's something for people too. This is a big mistake I see a lot of speakers make. You need to have one action that you want your audience to take, mm-hmm. not two, not three, one. So I'll see speakers and they'll they'll come off stage and they'll say, oh, you know, uh, oh, and if you want to connect with me, just connect with me at Josh Ramsey on, on uh, mm-hmm. Instagram. I'm also on Facebook. You can go to facebook.com Josh Ramsey mm-hmm. or, you know, my Twitter feed is this. And what's happening, people don't like choices. Your brain is working too hard now. They don't like choices. This is a big misconception. People think yeah. you have to give people choices. No, you don't. You want to give them one call to action. This is the one thing. And that thing can be whatever you want it to be. And so some people, uh, I work with lots of people and they feel uncomfortable selling. And I say, well, you have the wrong mindset about that. We're not going to call it selling. You got to serve. And so I call this napkin leadership. My friend, um, uh, uh, Joe Martin, he has a wonderful example. He says, when you walk into a restaurant and they, they give you a napkin, is your first move to stuff the napkin down your shirt and to wait for other people to serve you? Or is your first move to put the napkin over your, your forearm and to serve others? This is what you need to get into mm-hmm. a servant mind, mindset. You know, I hate the term servant leadership because I, I think it's redundant. I'm like, well, leaders by definition are servants. 
you know, uh, uh, great book everybody should read. Uh, some of the classics. Og Mandino, the greatest salesman of the world, is about uh, the best marketer in history. Was a guy by the name of Jesus Christ. So many people have never even heard. They've never met the guy, but they follow him. You know, there's nobody that's had more songs written mm. about him and movies made about him and things yeah. like that. I, and I'm not here to preach to people. I'm just saying, you know, look at the marketing uh, structure of that. So the the teaching point to people is if you really want people to do business with you, you have to figure out exactly what's the one step that you want people to take when you have a clear mindset about that. Because um, if, if you're not clear, potential customers are never going to be clear. And if, So maybe that's a free phone call, a consultation. Let's get to know one another. Maybe some people, yeah. that's that's what they're comfortable with. Some people, you know, I worked with a guy, this was amazing to me, Josh. So I, I was telling him, I'm like, hey, you got to practice this, whatever. Uh, he was, he's a real estate coach. And so he has a $40,000 coaching program. And I, I worked with him for two days. And he said, oh, Danny, this is great. I'm going to do a Zoom tonight. And I'm going to pitch my $40,000 coaching program. I'm like, okay, you do that, Carlos. <laughs> he's from Ecuador. <laughs> so so Carlos did it and he calls me the next day. He's like, oh, Danny, that was great. I signed up 23 people. <laughs> like, Josh, I'm not a math major, but 23 times 40,000. Yeah, yeah, he made $920,000 a- on a one hour Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, holy. I'm like, Carlos, you got to pay me a lot more money, man. That was unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> but you know what? He did the work. I love that. Yeah. You know, he, he, yeah. he reaped the rewards. You never know. You know, uh, mm-hmm. if, if you really want to learn about marketing, find an ugly guy with a beautiful wife because that guy knows how to market himself, <laughs> you know? <laughs> well, uh, that's, a, that's a powerful image uh, to, 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 leave our, to leave our listeners with. Um, Danny, it's been, it's been an absolute pleasure, man. I know that we could talk for a whole bunch more time. Uh, I think what I've really taken from this is and I'm I'm actually experiencing this right now. You know, I'm a recent addition to a host on this show. And I tell you, the people like yourself, uh, other other experts, other people that are putting themselves out there as speakers that I've met have been just a game changer. So much knowledge exchange, so much value exchange in putting yourself out there. Um, you know, I've 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 got a bit of a background in speaking myself. I've done some TEDx stuff and and again, the, the value of connecting and sharing. So I would agree with you that speaking is important. I think um, for those that, that are you know, getting cold shivers, thinking of getting, getting up on a stage, your insight into low, low bar, low fruit, you know, set that small stage and get on there and then move. Um, super, super valuable. And I love the idea of where's the napkin? Is it uh, sitting down to eat around your neck or is it over your hand getting out there to serve? Danny, it's been a pleasure. Is there anything that you want to leave us with? Anything that you feel like uh, we've left out uh, one last uh, shot on on getting your voice out there? Well, Josh, as a thank you to you and your listeners for bearing with me, I wanted to give everybody a couple of freebies. So if you go to freegiftfromdanny.com, Thanks. again, freegiftfromdanny.com, I'm going to give everybody a copy of uh, my book, Read, Lead, and Succeed. It's a book I wrote for a school principal who was trying to keep his faculty and staff positively engaged. So I said, okay, I'll write you a book. So every week I give you a concept, an inspirational quote, an inspirational story, a book recommendation on a book you should read, but you're probably too lazy because you're an adult. So I also give you a children's picture book recommendation that demonstrates the same concept. You can read that in five minutes. And then I'm also going to give everybody access to uh, last summer, I did a five-day reading challenge online for about 700 parents. And so every day for a week, for an hour, I'll give you all kinds of recommendations on how to get kids excited about reading because the more excited we get kids to read the more likely they are to read and the more that you read the better you get um you know i i think schools do an adequate job of teaching kids how to read but the question i always ask people is what good is it teaching a person how to read if they never want to read i teach people why to read because i've never had to tell a kid go watch tv i've never had to tell a kid go play a video game and i never want to have to tell a kid go read for fun i want them to do it because they love it and i think that that's uh, one of the fastest ways to uh, succeed in life is to uh, to fill your mind with lots of wonderful books. And I, I just love l- this time we've shared together today, Josh. I'm getting excited about uh, rereading a couple of the books that you talked about. <laughs> oh, man. Well, thank you so much for your time. Uh, your passion for reading just uh, really leads from the front. And I think it's a, it's a great reminder to all of us that 
might have got stuck in the weeds of running a business and you know working for a business not working on and you know getting these insights from some of the books you've mentioned and helping our kids read so that we can see how much it benefits them and then we can go oh yeah I can still read too is a, is a great reminder. I want to thank you so much for being on the show and I want to encourage everyone that's listening, go and check out, um, it was gift from Danny.com. That was it. Free, free gift from Danny.com. Free gift from Danny.com. Free gift from Danny.com. Thanks for correcting me. And thank you so much for being on the show and I will see, well, you will all hear from me out there on the Claire Brand Academy podcast very, very soon. Thanks for listening to the Clear Brand Academy podcast, where we take the mystery out of marketing and help you get more leads and sales with a clear brand and proven marketing tactics. If you liked this podcast, please leave a review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to podcasts. If you'd like to outsource your marketing to our team, go to clearbrand.com.